To say that we fall into sin is a lie. It is a lie. Nobody falls into sin. To imply that somebody falls into sin is to imply that it's an accident. The Bible teaches us that nobody falls into sin. We slip there and we slide there. By the time we enter the sin, we know, we know that that sin that we've fallen into started off with a temptation. And the temptation is not the sin we read. The temptation is not the sin. The temptation is the weapon that is formed. And it will be formed. It will be formed. The temptation is the weapon that is formed against you. And then you and me react. And our response depends on the prosperity of that weapon. Because there's two outcomes. We honor God or we honor Satan. Because God himself promised us in scripture that there's an escape for every temptation. No man or woman will stand before the Lord. And think they're going to argue and debate and say, hey, thank you, buddy, for dying for me. No, 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 no. The sacrifice is here and is now. The mercy, forgiveness, reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, it's here while you have breath. It is no more when your breath runs out. It is appointed for every man to die and then the judgment. And if you don't believe that, you are calling God a liar. And if you think what you hear this morning is not love, then you need to reevaluate your perception of love. Because the love of the word and the love of God is not the love of this world. Let me tell you that. The love of this world. Huh. Let me tell you that love. It's a love that you can give and take back as it pleases you because the love that you give others is dependent on how they make you feel they have to earn your love if you act in a certain manner towards me you may have my love if you don't i withdraw my love withdrawing love from people is hate Withdrawing love from people is hate. Are you confused? Let me ask it this way. What is the middle between love and hate? There is no middle. There is no middle. Love is truth. We love others enough we love people in the Lord to sacrifice our reputation, to be divided from friends, to be divided from family even, forsaking ourselves for Christ's sake and giving them the truth and not counting the cost to ourselves. That's love. Because let me put it this way. If God's love for me was dependent on my goodness, my goodness, I would be in deep trouble. I would be in deep trouble. So no man or woman will stand before the Lord and say, the enemy deceived me and I fell because you know in your heart 
you had an opportunity as minuscule as you might think to choose your action. You can confess with your mouth as you want. But you live what you believe and so do I. And you say, but who are you? You don't know me. I don't need to know you. I know him. And I know me. And the more I know him, the smaller I get. Let me tell you that. I don't compare myself to other preachers or pastors or Christians. I don't look at them and think, wow, I know more, I know less. I do more, I do less. No, 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 no. I tell you most of the time when I look down and out and broken and heavy hearted, it is because of an awareness of a Savior that is observing me in my heart every day. And we are to call to be holy, to become more Christ-like. The process of sanctification every day going forth, not in perfection, but as a way of life. And so the reflection we seek is not of ourselves, it is of Him. And let me tell you, when I look upon Him through His Word and who He tells me He is, it breaks me. And it makes me kind of poor in spirit. Does that not line up better? No, 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 no. By the time we have fallen into sin, we know, we know, we can play the victim. Oh, we all have stories. We all have very long and sad stories, but I tell you once, we listen with compassion and we ought to listen to compassion. But here's the thing, people. When that story is done, all that remains is action. And what we find behind everything is a smiling, rebellious heart. Now hear this this morning. Turn to God. Repent of your sins and believe upon Jesus Christ. Know what biblical repentance is. The importance because Jesus said that. Know what repentance is according to God. Because you cannot get that wrong, people. You cannot Assume you've repented because you have listened to pastors or preaching or YouTube or TikTok. Look at repentance according to God. You cannot believe upon the name of Jesus without repentance because Jesus said so. And then. What does Jesus mean by believing upon him? What did God mean by saying that calling upon him? What does that call mean? According to God. And if you are holding on to a false balance, what is a false balance? First of all, God hates a false balance. He said so. Proverbs 11 verse 1 says, A false balance is an abomination to God. Check yourself. The balance we claim to remain on this narrow path, is it of Him? Because you know what happens when we get off balance? We fall. We fall. God says he will not justify wicked scales in a bag of deceptive weights. In Micah 6 verse 11. But God also says to us in Proverbs 16 verse 11. That a just balance and scales belong to the Lord. And all the weights of the bag are his concern. 
We are talking about a godly balance because this narrow way is so narrow that only God's balance from God will keep us on it. And I tell you, when we step off, we know because it's so narrow and we fall upon our knees because his mercy is new every day. But not when you're on a broad way. On a broad way that seems right, we don't need balance. We swing from the left and we swing from the right. We don't need balance. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I need God every day. I need a Savior and a Redeemer in Jesus Christ every day. Because I cannot provide my balance. And each time I veer into it, guess what? I start tilting. But praise God that he's given me discernment to know when I start tilting. Because he promises us in the Psalms that even when the righteous trip, that they won't fall headlong. In other words, they won't fall to death. But many people have fell and don't even know they face down on the ground. So people... I might sound agitated to you this morning. I apologize for that. But don't let the enemy take this away from you. Maybe you need to hear it. Maybe it needs to give you comfort. Maybe it it needs to shake you a bit. I don't know. I don't know. I know God's promise is that his word will never return empty. And I've stopped looking at the scoreboard. God decides whose ears he opens and whose eyes he opens. He said so. God said he decides whom eyes he closes and whom ears he opens. And if you are offended by the word of God this morning, if you're in fact serious enough to not condemn something before investigation and you actually go and see if it is so what this preacher said and it makes you angry, then I say, Bless you. Bless the Lord for your anger because something is still alive in you. It means the Holy Spirit is is still a battle in you because I can tell you this, the devil does not bother whom he's defeated, brother. Okay? We don't worry about defeated enemies, do we? And we say peace, peace, when there is no peace. And we say, but I have balance. Ask the question. Stop relying on your feelings and what others say about your salvation. Compare who you really are in the deepest of who you are. That person that lies in bed staring at the ceiling that no other person knows your depths. Compare that person to scripture and see if you stand. And if you don't, You fall upon Christ. You fall upon Christ. And not everyone that calls him Lord will enter heaven. God promised that he can give you a new heart. We are not talking about the self-improvement of man. A new improved you. Oh, look at her. Look at him. Or look at me, world. We are talking about a heart transplant. A heart that wants and craves him. That thirsts for him. That thirsts and seek him in everything. And yes, the world will laugh at you when you truly follow Jesus Christ. Imagine in your mind this little boy walking behind his father in the snow. And his father is giving these giant steps. And you can imagine how ridiculous that little child looks trying to step into his dad's footprints. And the world will mock you and ridicule you. Call you a bigot, a fundamentalist, old-fashioned. 
is exactly what is supposed to happen. Not because you are a hurtful person, because that is the path of a disciple. Christians are disciples. You might say, you, but it's hard. God is asking so much. Let me say to you this morning, God is not asking much. He's asking everything. He's asking everything. It will cost you everything. Have you found the salvation of the Lord cheaper somewhere else? It's not of him. Jesus said many will come in his name and say, look, here he is. The enemy, Satan, comes as an angel of light. His pastors, Satan's pastors, Satan's doctrine, yes, Satan has doctrines too, appears as enemy or, or appears as light. The most beautiful voices hidden in our false worship music we listen to. But that's another sermon that is surely to stir up people even more. Check your balance. Check your balance. And compare what you claim to the word of God. And choose what you do with the truth. Choose what you do with the truth. All praises to our Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord of our lives. Amen.